Hello and welcome to lesson number 7.4, part B, where we will talk about interpolation methods. If you watch closely, we have here in the QGIS project currently the sampled points from the last lesson, the bounding, yeah, bounding polygon of those um, of our road network from the last lesson, and uh, some sort of height information which is the SRTM raster data set. When it comes into sampling and trying to interpolate between values, you always need to make sure, well, where are my samples and how are they distributed? Do I have some sort of measurements in the field? Let's assume that these samples were height measurements in the field and were not originated from the SRTM in the background. So we have some sample points where we have an information in this time or this time the height information could be rainfall data temperature whatsoever but we have an information for the moment at point locations now we would like to extrapolate or interpolate depends on where you are here in this in this uh, pattern field we would like to get some new information out of the current information so we would like to have a raster in the end telling me how is the value of choice in our case the height value distributed over the area therefore we have now only point information so but first let's have a look on the distribution of the points are we confident that this is randomly enough to be a good evaluator for our uh, for our measurements for our interpolation therefore we will use the distance metrics once again not once again but first in our choice so we have the sampled points and we will use a unique id field fid and we will um, take a look at the sampled points here once again the fid and we are not interested in the in the big distance metrics because this would be then 200 times 200 means 40,000, something like that um but we will just be interested in the summary distance metrics that means okay i will take a look at the next point or the two next points or the four and five next points and we'll calculate the mean standard deviation minimum and maximum let's do this and let's say well we would like to have a look at the next five points and calculate the mean value and so on um, of the distances to these five next points just run let's close this now we have a distance metric let's have a look here at the attribute table and what is it telling me well first of all we have a mean value of distance c's of 580 meters and maximum value of well, about 5000 meters let's have a look here where is this point right that it's so far away from all the others oh there it is yes that's somehow an outlier of information, right? Okay, let's close this again and let's have a look now on the distribution of these mean values. Therefore, I'm using a tool called Data Plotly. It is available on the plugins, manage and install plugins. I'll just look at not installed Data Plotly. Data Plotly should not be there because I have it already installed. So there it is. It's from Matteo Geta from Fonaliagis. Thanks again for bringing this up. And Data Plotter uses D3, I assume, and we can create histograms. Histograms of what? Of values, of course. And this shows us the distribution and gives us an idea. Well, is it evenly distributed? Is it following the Gaussian curve or whatsoever? So let's have a look here on the distance metrics and we will take the mean value here let's go there plot title distribution of distances distances legend title no, don't use this one mean value uh, y label is number of occurrences We will use a manual bin size of 30. Why that? Because we would like to have a proper insight. And let's create the plot. There it is. 
So we have one um, point with very small mean value. This goes up, down again, and it follows somehow this uh, um, a Gaussian curve. So we will assume that this is somehow um, evenly distributed. But of course, this really sticks out, and um, we should remove this value maybe from or from the calculation, from the interpolation, or we should really be careful on the on the result in this certain area of our measurements right because there's a lot of uncertainty in there so now we have sampled or we have gained an insight in the distribution of our of our points now let's have a look on the different interpolation methods first of all you can connect these points and uh, why we are doing this well we are dealing with first law of Waldo Tobler Waldo Tobler was um, American Swiss um, geographer let's have a look yeah american swiss geographer and cartographer and he stated the first law of geography everything is related to everything else but near things are more related than distance things things saying so let's have a look here on the on the on our point pattern that means that if i compare two points near each other they should show somehow a similar value in in the measured or in the observed attribute and distant points like this one and this should, should have well just because i see a value here that does not mean that it has so much impact on the or on an unknown value here so if i see here a value of 500 that does not mean that this needs to be 500 as well or there's a big possibility a probability that this value here is 500 as well because they are far far away from each other that's tobler's law in the first place so now how to how to interpolate things here right so first of all we can have a look at the at a static value pattern that takes into account gsim polygons and these occur due to the fact that we can connect values or point measurements with each other and we can create those Voronoi diagram Voronoi diagrams are quite easily created in in, in QGIS. so let's have a look here on the gdal rest analysis function and we will work with the nearest neighbor first so let's use a sample we will take everything that is there as default parameters so we will not apply anything else here and say run now what we can see here now is that there is some looks a little bit odd right so very pixely um there's no difference in in the height value coming from 71 here to 71 there but there it's 134 so the value is evenly distributed here right so there's no difference and then there's a big gap to the next value that's some sort of interpolation method but to be quite honest it's just a representation of a point to a very specific area or of a point value to a very specific area and you can see that there we are somehow matching the pattern of the SRTM in the back end so we have the high values over here some low values and we can easily or we can also see um, this valley here right so if you have a close look it is somehow visible in the data but of course also the extrapolation is very very you know non-saying because it's just a static value all over the area so, but this is the first approach, right? So linear, uh, not linear interpolation, but nearest neighbor. Then I will skip the moving average, but I will go to linear. That takes two points and tries to interpolate from A to B. And of course it has some, some, uh, some slope, this curve from A to B. And so it's trying to interpolate this one. Let's have a look here on sample search distance as again, we will only select the z value as height and press run and let's have a look here for god's sake we will rename this layer this was the nearest neighbor 
and this one was C linear interpolation. Let's have a look now again. Once again, we have static values in the southwest end, but on the right, we get much more detail, right? So that looks much better than our nearest neighbor interpolation. But still, it's quite edgy, and if you take a look at the slopes, this does not look natural as it should. Talking about slopes, I would like to show you another great tool which I discovered in my daily work with QGIS, which is called QProf. In fact, let's have a look here on the plugins. Installed QProf. That enables you, or authors Mauro Alberti and Marco Zanieri, uh, this enables you to calculate or to visualize um, profiles in your data. So let's have a look here and go with plugins, QProf, open this up. I'll make this as a, as a own window here. So first we will define the source DEM. Let's have a look here on the linear DEM, right, and the SRTM. Okay, we will digitize a line from A to B. Let's go here, 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 and here. Right click to finish it. We will then read the source data that takes the SRTM and the value data or the, the linear data, and we will profile or we will Oh, we need to calculate the statistics first. Great, we have done this. Create the profile graph. Take everything as it is. We will use the linear in green, and there's a TM in blue. Press on OK and OK. And now we can see the two into uh, the interpolation values. So we have quite a good fit here in the in the uh, in the. Uh, in the lower regions of our of our of our uh, profile, but if there's a lot of variance in the in the um, in the mountainous area, we cannot we cannot even yeah take this seriously as a good interpolation measurement. So now we have two interpolation methods seen already. Let's have a look at the third one. The third one will be IDV with nearest neighbor searching. IDV or IDW, IDW takes another approach. It looks at to, into into the surrounding neighbors and say, well, even if it's a little bit far away, it still has some impact on the on the value that I observe at the at, that I should observe at the location. So it takes this weighting power and with a decreasing weighting power. Um, you will get evenly dis evenly weights, so every every point, every measurement point has the same impact of a non-measured location. Uh, nonetheless, it's far away or, or near. And if you increase the weighting power, you you will see a different a different thing. And we will take this into account when we are dealing with this weighting power in some sort of um, um, modeling approach. So we'll use the sample data set. Once again, stick to everything like it is. You use the height, just press run. Now we have an output here. Let's rename this with IDW to, and this is the weighting power. Now we have some speckles here, but this is already quite a good improvement according to the other, or compared to the other interpolation methods right so we are coming from here near scenario just awful we are going to linear and then we are here with idv or idw and let's have a look maybe now on the profile again going back to the qprof plugin Define the source DMs again. No, come on. We will take the IDW and the SRTM. And again, the linear interpolation.
Ooh, one small digitized line here. Some compare. We will read the source data. We will calculate profile statistics. We will create a topographic pro profile. IDW in green. Linear in blue. And SRTM in black. So remember, IDW in green, linear in blue, and the SRTM, the real value, in black. And this is even better, right? So we are coming down a little bit and we are approaching the real SRTM values quite good already. Now, as I, as, I, as I said, there's this weighting power function, right? So what is this weighting power and how can we deal with it? What is a good weighting power value for analysis? The uh, weighting power of two is the default. So let's try out what, what happens if we change and play around with this value. So you see that there are some freckles and you have some, some, some holes and some, and some mountains here. That's quite a not so good pattern. So let's have a look how we can remove this or increase the information we have. Therefore, I will open up the, again the tool grid IDV, IDW, and I will select to run it as a batch process. Now, the batch process takes everything um, that is needed to calculate, and you can it will take it one by one. So let's create different entities let's say 10 and we will use the sample data click here check this say okay now I will say out of full just fill down and we will go by 1 1.5 we will skip the 2 because we have the 2 already we will go to 2.5 3 four and five well these are a little bit too much of it and we will stick with all these other factors and we will create some new names for it Let's go with the weighting power. No, a bit too much information in there, but um, this is fine for the moment. So it's 1.0, 1 1.5, 2.5, 3.0, 4.0, 5.0. Oh. So I will not take anything different here now. But you might remember that we have to choose that we had to choose which which attribute it should interpolate, right? This, therefore, unfortunately, this dialog is not very um, good designed. So we will go to the advanced view, and now you can create or you can select the value to take into account. We'll fill this down again. Everything else will be as it is, and just press on run. process has finished now so let's open up the finder go to the um, go to the results and let's add those patterns to the layer table so these are results so maybe let's go with the highest value first you can see that there's that the power function defines okay if i'm nearer the amount of or the probability will be will be increased that the value is the same so the power function follows a completely different shape and if we compare this 
and this is now 5.5 so we are approaching somehow this this nearest neighbor interpolation right so if you compare this no uncheck the id w2 if you compare this to this this is quite similar so if we increase it even more to a higher level the power function will yeah somehow create those not connected islands uh, in the data and we don't like this right so let's go down to four three two point five one point five and one so if we if we go with one it somehow reminds uh, there's exactly at the measured point so let's create this or at the sample points let's take this above and let's have a look here on these sample points exactly as at the sample points you will get the same values right so bam it's on the point but once you're going somewhere else the the it really falls down and so you have those spikes in the data and that is not a good approach either so let's have a look here on 2.5 and compare the 2.5 with the 2 depends on what you like but this is quite another approach right so um if you are doing interpolation always make sure to stick to the rules of the interpolation methods currently we were interpolating height values and height values are not evenly distributed or or if you are going down if you make an assumption for this area this is total different mean values according to the topography in the end um compared to let's say this area right so and we are comparing mountainous areas where we have a lot of variance in the height data uh, to lowlands where you have more or less zero variance in the height data so always make sure that you really understand the statistics behind this that you do it wisely take care of your point data don't do this interpolation methods with outliers right or not evenly evenly um, distributed points treat the results with care so if you're doing this sort of analysis always take a look behind what you have done ask yourself the questions that are arose like why do i see an increased value here than a pit down here does not make any sense from from a physical perspective because we are dealing with height data right if you see such patterns in in um, rainfall data same situation you have a, a, you have a mountain in your data or or some high values and then you have those pits in the in the in the interpolated in the interpolated results ask yourself does this make sense from from a natural physical perspective no not for not for rainfall right but maybe for temperature because temperature is also um, um, dependent on the topography so if you have a pit there a real pit like 500 meters deep of course the temperature down there is something different once again what we have learned today we have looked at three different uh, interpolation methods first of all nearest neighbor linear and uh, idw and uh, we have had a look or we had a look on the distance matrix and some some um, tools how to visualize those values using the really really good data plotly tool we have we are taking a look on different profiles using the qprof tool <laughs> and i hope you liked it if there's something unclear you would like to make a remark or discuss something just drop a comment please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned with my uh, next videos thanks again take care and goodbye